Hello, today we're going to be talking a little bit about SEO for Squarespace websites. I'm going to go through some ways to optimise your Squarespace website for um, search engines using the built-in tools and abilities that Squarespace already has. So the first thing you really want to be doing before you actually start using the Squarespace SEO tools is to create a keyword strategy. So this just means coming up with several keywords and key phrases that you really want to be found for in Google and search engines. So for example, for me, I want people to find me if they type in phrases such as um, Squarespace website design, website designer in Cornwall, website designer in the UK, um, Squarespace website design tutorials for example. Those are what's called long tail keywords or key phrases that are very specific and that I want people to be finding me for when they type into Google. Um, I'm not a huge expert in keyword um, strategy development, so I've gone ahead and I've found an article online that is a really good guide to creating a keyword strategy and doing research behind the keywords that you want to be found for. The next step once you know what keywords and phrases you want to be found for is to create your search engine description. So your search engine description is basically the little phrase that comes up when you type in um, your website or when you come up in the rankings in Google. And this can be anywhere from between 50 to 300 characters long. Um, I suggest you use the full amount of characters and you need to create a description that not only really summarizes your business in a way that makes sense and is relevant um, to your target client, but also includes those keywords and phrases in a natural way. So once you've created your search engine description, you just need to add it to your Squarespace website. So to do this, you simply go to your um, dashboard, click on settings, scroll down, go to SEO, and paste it into the search engine description box here. You'll see also while you're in that section, you have an ability to change your page title formats. So your page title is what appears at the top of your website in your browser tab. So if we go here, you can see, for example, um, on Olivia Bossett's website, hers just says um, Olivia Bossett Photography. On my own website, if we hover over, we can see it says by Rosanna Squarespace Website Design UK. So you can see I've added in a keyword into my page title there. So on that same SEO section there, you can add your own um, page title formats. And I'd suggest you use your focus keyword or phrase um, as long as it makes sense in that area. So your search engine description actually only applies to your homepage when it shows up in Google. So you can also change the descriptions of all of your other pages as well. Um, automatically, Google will just take the first few lines of text that are on that page and show that up in the rankings um, automatically, which is annoying and it doesn't always make sense because it might have grabbed text from image captions or headings or different things around the page that doesn't actually make sense or flow as a paragraph when Google shows it in the rankings. So you can go ahead and change all the descriptions for all your pages. It's really simple in Squarespace. You just need to navigate to the pages section on your um, backend dashboard and then hover over the page that you want to edit the description of. So for example, if I wanted to edit the description of my website design page, I would just hover over it click the settings wheel and this pop-up will appear. Um, on here you can edit your navigation title, so that's how um, the page appears in your main navigation area and the page title as well. Um, so you can change the name if it's something different to the navigation title for example. But you'll also see that you can change the description of your page and this will end up being your um, description that shows up in Google as well. So again, I'd encourage you to actually create unique descriptions for every page. They need to make sense, be relevant, um, be appealing to your target client as well, so that if they see it come up in, rank in search engine rankings, then they want to actually click on it. As well as your page descriptions for each page on Squarespace, you can also change the URLs of any page, any post, event, product on your website. Um, and it's really important to try and keep these short and sweet 
Um, use keywords if you can, but it's not always relevant and it's better if you don't try and just keyword stuff at any possible moment. Just keep things relevant. Um, but keeping it short is the main tip here and you don't want any filler words involved in that. For example, this blog post, Squarespace automatically added the URL that's really, really long. It's full of little filler words. So I've manually taken that out when I was writing my blog post um, and kept it to only include keywords and actual meaningful words. So to change the URL on a blog post or an event or a product in Squarespace, you simply need to navigate to that page. So I'm just gonna go into my blog section here and pretend I'm creating a new post. So if I say SEO for Squarespace, So then I've created um, a blog post. I'm just going to save it as a draft. And you can see if I go back in to edit it now, if I go to the options tab, you'll see that it's automatically generated a really long um, URL here. And you can actually just go in straight away, take out all the filler words and um, shorten the URL manually. And then once you have done that, just always remember to click save as well. Um, to make sure that it saves any changes that you make. So my next topic is really important and it's about images and optimizing image files before you upload them to your website. So there are three things that you really need to be doing to every image before you upload it. The first thing is resizing the files. You want to make sure that image files are as small as possible because when they're smaller, um, your website loads faster. If you have loads of large images on your website, your website's going to be taking ages to load, which is bad for people's um, user experience, but also really bad for Google. Google hates slow loading websites. So you can check the size of an image by right clicking and selecting get info. Um, and then it should tell you how many bytes um, the image is made up of on your disk. And you want to make sure, um, obviously this one's very small, um, but probably photos are usually over 1000 um, kilobytes and you definitely want to get it under 1000. Ideally, you should be looking at around um, 500 or less um, for the best performance. Um, just to make it extra, extra quick um, to load images. So um, to resize um, images, if they are too big, you can use any kind of photo editor like um, Photoshop or Pixlr and just um, resize it um, to try and get it to the smallest file size you can. The second thing you need to be doing is renaming your files before you upload them anywhere. So normally when images come straight up your camera they'll have a weird sort of letter number combination thing like DS1072 or something um, showing you what number image that was on your camera. But this is no good for Google. Google wants to be able to read your file names that are on your website so you need it to be something that's um, obviously relevant to what's in the image, um, but also um, if you can put your keywords and phrases in there, that's great. If you need to rename more than just one image, um, so you want to bulk kind of rename a whole uh, bunch of images that you want to upload to your website or in a blog post, you can just highlight them, right click, and then select rename however many items it is. And then it will ask you um, to choose the format and um, I've just selected name and index which means the name that you give it plus a number um, and then you can type in whatever you like into that. So for example I might want to change it to um, SEO Squarespace tutorial um, so that the eventual names of all of them will be SEO, Squarespace tutorial, then a dash, then the number of the image. And that just means that I've included some keywords into the file name as well. The third thing you need to do once you've uploaded the images, um, and that is add an alt tag to your images. Now, Squarespace actually calls this a file name, and I'm not sure why, it's very confusing, but when you basically upload an image to Squarespace, it will have um, a little section underneath the upload, which will let you put in what's called a file name in Squarespace, but it's actually an alt tag. I'll just demonstrate this really quickly by adding a new image. So if we just 
go and add an image block here. You will see in this pop-up that you can upload an image by clicking this button, or below it, you can add a file name. And this is Squarespace's version of an alt tag. Um, so for example, if I was to upload um, a picture of me here, I would then call this something descriptive um, that fits with what the image is. But also, if it is relevant, I'm gonna include some keywords as well, um, just to add that in. So. Um, So obviously that alt tag is describing the image, that is a picture of me, um, and that's what I do, and that also happens to be my focus keyword as well. So an alt tag is basically a text version of your image. You want to um, you want it to be as descriptive as possible. It's kind of like a caption of what your what your image is, but it doesn't actually show up on your website. It is only viewable by screen readers for people with hard of sight who are um, using a screen reader to access your website. Really important accessibility feature. This is one of the main reasons why you should be adding alt tags anyway. To be honest. Um, and the other reason is that Google will um, be able to read them as well. So it's good if you can include your keywords um, if it's relevant. So moving on to structuring your website, Google really loves it if your website is nice and clean and structured and easy to read. It means that people have a better experience when they're viewing your website, but it also means that it's clearer for Google to index your content as well. So you really want to be laying out each of your pages using headings. Now, Squarespace makes this really easy for you. So all you have to do is when you are writing text um, or adding a text block on your website, um, as you're writing it, you can actually choose your headings by just highlighting the text and using this drop down to add heading ones, um, heading twos and heading threes, um, and just normal text as well. Uh, so my um, example here on this page would be that this is a heading one up here, the about by Rosanna bit, um, heading two is below it, and then this area here is heading three. So it's kind of creating different layers throughout my content. It's showing Google um, what, what information is the most important on the page, and it's also um, creating a good sense of dynamic for someone reading my page. This just kind of creates pointers and directions for Google to know what information is more important and what's um, less important. And it also just helps be a guide for people reading your blog posts and your pages as well. Hello, Pepper. Hello. My dog Pepper decided to join the video for a minute, so um, hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh no, she's come back in. Sean, shoot. Okay. <laughs> That's most of my tips for Squarespace SEO, but obviously there are so many other things that you can be doing for your SEO strategy as well um, that aren't just specific to Squarespace. It really is an ongoing task that you need to dedicate time for if you want to be ranking for Google for your keywords. There's so many other things, but um, this video is specifically just for Squarespace um, tools. So hopefully you found that useful and um, thank you for watching.